Now here in this program, we will try to implement the insertion sort and the selection sort algorithm and then we are going to compare these algorithms on the basis of their actual running time on the system. Okay, And then later on we are going to compare the actual running time of these algorithms with the bubble sort or you can say with the improved bubble sort algorithm. Okay, So what is the insertion sort algorithm? insertion sort so and the selection sort so let us do one thing initially we implement the selection sort because it is, it is quite easy as compared to the insertion sort so we, we are going to implement the selection sort algorithm and what is the selection sort algorithm if we have an array like this we are which is having some elements like the elements are 9 0 11 3 42 6 and 7 if these are the elements now in this array in the selection sort there are two ways either you can search what is the minimum data and you can put that minimum data in the beginning of the array or you can search what is the maximum data and you can put that maximum data in the end of the array okay so we are going to search the maximum data and we are going to remember the index location of that maximum data put it in the end so we, we are going to search it from here to here and we'll find find out that this 42 is the maximum data. So we'll take 42, and we are going to swap it with the last index location. So 7 will come here, and 42 will come here. After this one, the array that we'll be having will be containing the data which is 9, 0, 11, 3, 7, 6, and 42. Now in the next pass, we are going to search in these elements. We are not going to consider the last index location because the data in the last index location is already at its correct position. So we'll search between here to here and we'll take we'll search what is the maximum data and you'll see the maximum data here is 11. So we are going to swap 11 with the last index location which is containing 6. So 6 will come here and 11 will come here. Therefore the data that we'll be having will be 9, 0, 6, 3, 7, 11 and 42. Now you can see after uh, performing this operation two times the last index location is containing last two index location are containing the two maximum data so we have to search from here to here and find out what is the maximum data and you will see the maximum data is 9 so we are going to put swap 9 from here to here 7 will come here and 9 will come here then data that we will be having is 7 0 6 3 9 11 and 42 you can see these three data items are at its correct position again we are going to search between these items so 7 is maximum data so 3 will come here and 7 will come here then we will be having 3 0 6 7 9 11 and 42 so these elements are at the, uh, already sorted now here 6 is already at its correct position next we will be sorting 3 0 6 7 9 11 and 42 these elements are sorted and here you can see 3 is maximum data so 0 will come here and 3 will come here. After this entire operation, these elements are at its correct position. And because this n minus 1 elements are at its correct position, the last element will also be at its correct position. This is the selection or sort algorithm. We have already explained this one. The time complexity for the selection sort algorithm, in the best case, it is order of n. It is the best case. In worst case, it is order of n square. So best case order of n square worst case is also order of n square as well as the average case is also theta of n square so generally best case is given is omega of n square so this is the time complexity for the selection sort algorithm so let us make a function to implement this selection sort algorithm okay so fine so we will be making a function for implementing the selection sort so there is a function name is selection sort and we are going to take integer a as input and integer n as the number of data elements okay. and every time we have to sign the maximum data for here for this purposes we are going to use two loops number one one loop will be used to find the maximum data and the second loop will be used to swap it okay so we'll, first of all we'll swap it the last index location then we'll swap it the second last index location then we'll be swapping it the third last index location and so on so we'll take two variables integer i comma j comma temp okay the temp is a temporary variable after this one we will be taking the loop so for i is equal to n minus 1 and i uh, greater than 0 and i plus 1 
so this outer loop is actually presenting from the index location it is representing the last index location next time the value of i will be uh, n minus 2 so this should be n i minus minus so next time the value of i will be n minus 2 so it is it will be representing the second last index location and then the next time the value of i will be n minus 3 it will be representing the third last index location then the value of i will be n minus 4 it will be representing the fourth last index location and so on okay and then we will be taking the second loop to find the maximum data so i'm going to take a variable integer max is equal to 0 now this max variable is just representing the index location of the maximum data so we'll assume that the in, at the index location 0 we have the maximum data so we'll be have it having for j is equal to 1 j less than i or j less than equal to i and we'll be having j plus plus and j plus plus okay and then if a of j is greater than a of max then we'll do max is equal to j so this loop is representing what is the maximum data so we are going to point to the maximum data okay after this loop if max is not equal to uh, i then we are going to swap these values so we'll be taking a variable temp is equal to a of max but just do one thing uh, rather than this we will make a function to swap the values because that will be easy to uh, implement because every time you have to call the swap function so i'm just going to call a function which is swap and this will be for call by reference so swap integer star a comma integer star b and i'm just going to call integer temp is equal to star a and star a is equal to star b and star b is equal to 10 this is a very simple function to swap the values okay so here to swap i am just going to call hmm, so i am just going to call swap function and the swap function i have to pass the addresses of those locations remember i am saying addresses so here i am saying uh, addresses will be passed like a plus max comma swap uh, comma a plus i so because a is containing the base index location so i think you understood this one but still let me explain to you how i am writing this one if this is an array okay and uh, there are some values inside the array the values are 5 9 1 4 and 0 and the, it is pointed by a so if the base address of this location is 1000, it will be 1004, it will be 1006, it will be 1008, 10 and it will be, one. so this is 1008, this will be 1000, uh, instead of 1010, this will be 1012 and this will be 1016. Now if I am doing a plus max, a plus max, now this a plus max, if the value of max is 2, then this will become 1000 plus 2. And 1000 plus 2 means it is 1008. So I'm just passing the index address of this location. In the same way, when I'm saying a plus i, I'm just passing the address of that location. Okay, so we are going to swap the values which are present in those address locations using this one. Okay, and then after this one, uh, we'll just try to see if it is working perfectly or not. So we'll take an array integer arr, which is having 10 locations, and assuming the values which are present is 9. 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 and it will be having a value which is 0. Now we will be taking integer i. So for I am going to call this function which is select sort arr with 10 values and then I am going to print all the values for i is equal to 0, i less than 10, i plus plus and I am going to print f percentage d and percent d comma I will be having here of i okay and this uh, we are just testing out whether this function is working perfectly or not so I'm going to go to build and I'm going to do build and run now you can see this work function is working perfectly 
so it is sorting all the data which is like this now even if the data is repeated for example here we'll be having the values instead of 3 we are having 8 instead of 9 we are having 0 if the values are repeated then i'm going to build and run and you can see it is sorting that repeated values also that means our program is work, working perfectly and there's no problem whatsoever okay i think this is very easy to implement the selection sort now we'll compare the time complexity of the improved bubble sort and the selection sort first okay so we'll just copy the function from here that uh, the improved bubble sort function i'm just going to copy control c and i'm going to paste it here control v control c and control v now i'm going to take an array which is having the items which has 10000 so we'll take an array which is having 10000 data items and we'll try to implement it so i'm just going to copy this code here and i'm going to paste it here okay and this time we are going to implement instead of bubble sort we are going to implement a select sort select sort selection sort algorithm and with the selection sort select with the selection sort function so we are going to print the time so let us see how much time it is going to take to implement this one with the selection sort algorithm and it is showing that it is taking 128 milliseconds with the select sort function now we'll also implement the same function but this time we'll compare it with the uh, bubble sort algorithm so again we are going to initialize the array with the same values for the for loop we are initializing the array with the same values and then we'll uh, <coughs> we are going to compare it so this time i'm going to implement the improved bubble sort so instead of select sort it will be the function name will be improved bubble sort algorithm with 10,000 data items and then I'm going to print these values so to print these values I'm going to copy this code from here to here and this time I'm just going to with improved bubble sort this is improved bubble sort function and I'm going to go to build and build and run so let us see okay see this with this improved bubble sort function that is going to take 0.000 milliseconds now why it is taking 0.00 milliseconds because the data which we are storing inside the array is already sorted you can see from index location 0 to 10,000 we are sorting the data storing the data already in the sorted format what if the data is not sorted that means if we are having unsorted data or the worst case which is the data is sorted in decreasing order okay so here I'm trying to sort the data in decreasing order in both array like this both the arrays are containing the values where the data is sorted in decreasing order now if we implement these two function i'm going to go to build and run now you can see with the help of selection sort algorithm it is taking 136 milliseconds with the help of improved bubble sort function it is going to take 222 milliseconds okay and uh, i'm just going to make simple simple changes which can be done here for example here also uh, instead of calling this function i could have called the swap function so swap with the a plus i and a uh, a plus uh, we'll be comparing with a of j so this is a of j and a of j plus 1 a plus j plus 1 let's have this function let us see now let us compare these algorithms so the selection sort bubble algorithm is taking 137 milliseconds and the bubble sort function is taking 315 milliseconds to sort these data items right so here if the data is sorted in the decreasing order and you wanted to sort in the data in the increasing order then the selection sort algorithm is behaving better than the bubble sort algorithm but if the data is already sorted here you know you can just i'm just sort sorting the data if the data is already sorted right so here you can see i've changed the value inside the array now the data is already sorted now if i execute the function build and run now you can see this this time the bubble sort function is taking better time as compared to the uh, selection sort function okay so this is how you can compare the selection sort and the uh, bubble sort function now let us do one thing now let us write one more program where we are going to compare the insertion sort sort function with the selection sort function and the bubble sort function okay so let us do that in the next video